Okay, we're going to find the power series expansion for the function inverse tangent x. And remember, we usually have two ways to find the power series expansion for a function, right? The first way is we can use our best friend. And the second way is we can use the Taylor formula. And of course, whenever we can utilize our best friend, we should definitely do so, right? Otherwise, I wouldn't call this to be our best friend in the first place, isn't it? So now the question is, is there any connection between our best friend and inverse tangent x? Remember, we can do algebra operations and also calculus operations with our best friend. And now let's come back to inverse tangent x and let's think calculus. What if we differentiate inverse tangent x? We'll get what? We will get 1 over 1 plus x squared, right? Well, in another word, if I integrate 1 over 1 plus x squared, I can get inverse tangent x. That's so wonderful, right? Even though 1 over 1 plus x squared, it's not exactly our best friend, but we can do some algebra operation to get the power series for 1 over 1 plus x squared. And now, let's put everything in action right here. Inverse tangent x, it's the same as integral 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. And our goal for now is to first come up with the power series for this first. And for the inside here, we can just use our best friend right here, right? By plugging something, you will see. Okay, so this is integral 1 and 1. I will just keep them because they match with our best friend right here and right here. However, the best friend here has the minus. This is the plus, but it's no big deal because we can look at this plus as minus negative, right? And this right here is x squared. Okay, that will be my input now. x squared like this. And remember, we have to include the negative x squared because that was a plus. And we have to have this negative in black because the best friend says so. So, as you can see, this right here fits into this form. And all in all, I just had to plug in negative x squared into the x right here for our best friend, right? So that way we can come with a power series for this. And then we can just integrate and then we can get the power series for the inverse tangent. That will be the strategy. Okay, it also depends on the direction. It also depends on what you are trying to achieve. Sometimes you may want to have the expanded version for the power series. Sometimes you may want to have the summation version of the power series. But I will do both for you guys in this video, right? So let's do it. I'll put it down right here first. I am not integrating it yet, so I will just put down the integral sign for now. For this right here, I will just have to plug in negative x squared into this x, that x, and that x, and so on, right? The first term is 1, so we have 1, and then plus, and then the next term is just x, but my input is negative x squared now, so we'll just write this down right here. And then the next term, as you can see, is the input to the second power. So we'll just add the input, which is this, negative x squared, and then you square that, and it keeps on going forever, right? This is the pattern x squared, the third power, plus da da da, and then dx. And I will also put down the summation form right here. We have to integrate, plugging this into this x. So we have to integrate the summation right here. n goes from 0 to infinity. And then the input is negative x squared, and then to the nth power, dx, like that. And remember, in order for our best friend to be legitimate, we have to include the radius and also the interval of convergence, right? And that's all from here. The absolute value of the input has to be less than 1. So let me also include it right here. Absolute value of the input, which is that again, negative x squared, it has to be less than 1, okay? Right, so here's the deal. I am going to just clean this a little bit and clean this a little bit, and then I'll integrate, okay? So this is just going to be integral. This is going to be positive 1. And this is to the first power, so it becomes minus, and then we have the x squared. And then negative to the second power becomes positive, and we add. So this is plus. x squared squared becomes x to the fourth power. And then the next term is negative to the third power, so it's minus. 
2 and then 3. So you multiply the powers, become 6, right? So you have minus x to the 6th power, and the next term is going to be plus, so on forever, dx. And for this right here, this is how I'm going to simplify it. Let me keep the integral sign. Let me keep the summation sign, and it goes from 0 to infinity. This is the same as saying negative 1 to the nth power, right? So let's put that down first. And then this right here, x squared to the nth power, it's the same as x to the 2n. Okay? So negative 1 times x squared, I put a negative 1 to the nth power first. x squared to the nth power, that's x to the 2n. And we have the dx. Alright? And for this right here, okay, you can do a few steps to justify this, but well, I'll just show you guys right here. And then see once you can skip a lot of these steps. First of all, absolute value of negative, the negative doesn't matter, so we just have absolute value of x squared to be less than 1, right? And technically, I cannot take the square root yet, because the square is inside of the absolute value. But check this out. Absolute value of x squared, well, we know x squared means x times x, so this is the same as saying absolute value of x times x, okay? And here's the deal. Absolute value of a product is the same as the product of the absolute value. That's the gentleman, okay? So this is the same as saying absolute value of x times absolute value of x. And now I have two things. They are the same thing, multiplying with each other. So this is the same as absolute value of x and then to the second power. So in another word, this is actually the same as that. And this is the quick proof of it, okay? So of course, all this is less than 1, less than 1, less than 1. And from here, because you know absolute value of x, this is always positive. So I can just take the square root on both sides. I do not have to put on plus minus because absolute value of x is always positive. I can just cross the square and the square out. Cross the square and then the square root out without any worry. So in another word, absolute value of x is less than 1. It happens to be the same as the best friend, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, time for integration. This is the best part of this. Integral of 1 in the x world is just x. And then the next term is just going to be minus. You add the power becomes 3, divide by the power becomes the 1 third right here, and the x to the third power. And then you know the deal, 1 fifth, x to the fifth power. What's next? Minus 1 over 7, x to the seventh power, and then plus da da da, right? And here's a small thing. We did the integration, and remember, whenever we integrate, if there's no number here, we have to put plus c at the end, right? Well, in this case, we have the plus da 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 because we have infinitely many terms. Usually, we don't put a plus c at the end. In this case, we put a c plus in the front, right? So let me just write this down, c plus. Here is the constant of integration, okay? So. That's pretty much the result of this integral. That's it. And now, let me show you how we can integrate the summation notation. Remember, this is super easy to integrate because we are just doing the power rule. This is all you have to care because this is the x to the power, right? And the power rule says, no, the power rule backwards. We just have to add 1 first, which becomes 2n plus 1 and then divided by that power. And that's all we have to do to integrate. And this is why we love power 3 so much, because it's so easy to integrate, right? All right, so we still keep the summation. And in this case, let's put on a C plus first, if you guys don't mind. And then the summation. And notice that earlier, if you just look at this part, I didn't lose any term, right? So when you integrate, you wouldn't lose any terms neither you will just have n goes from 0 to infinity, okay? And then let's put down the, the part that was n first, which is going to be negative 1 to the nth power over 2n plus 1. And then the power here for the x is x to the 2n plus 1, just like this, okay? So this is the expanded version, and this is the version in the summation notation, and here's a small trouble. What is the c value? Well, sometimes when you're just integrating, um, this, if this is a known function, 
if this is a unknown power series, then you will just have to keep the C as how it is, okay? But in our case, we do know this right here represents inverse tangent x. So right here, let me just show you guys the rest of the detail. Inverse tangent x is equal to all this, likewise equal to all that. Let's focus on the expanded version with inverse tangent x. We have to figure out what C is. And I am going to change the color to blue, if you guys don't mind for the C, so that way this C will stand out better. Okay? And yes, I'm using a blue pen again. And this is how we can figure out the value of C. On the left hand side, we just have inverse tangent of x. On the right hand side here, we have C plus bunch of x right here, right? This is what we can do. We are just going to pick a number for x, an easy number, a legitimate number though. Well, let me just say x is equal to 0, and I'm just going to plug in 0 into this x, I will plug in 0 into all this x here, and you'll see what we get, okay? So, on the left-hand side, we will get inverse tangent of x is 0 now, just like this. And then on the right-hand side, we will have this is equal to c, right? That's the constant. And then plus 0 into this x, minus 1 third times 0 into that x. And you know the deal. The rest, you plug in 0 here, plug in 0 here, and so on. And in fact, all these terms, they all have an x, right? So I will just say plus a bigger zero like this. And now, what's the inverse tangent of zero? This is just zero, isn't it? And all this right here are just zero as well. So in other words, you'll see c is equal to zero. That's it. So I can come back here and I can erase the c. I can come back here to erase the c. And by the way, this C and that C, they are of course the same, because this is just the summation version of that, right? So C is equal to zero here and here. Finally, I will just write this down legitimately for you guys. The inverse tangent x, this is equal to C is zero now. Here's the expanded version. You see we have x minus one third, x to the third power plus one fifth, x to the fifth power, and then minus 1 over 7, x to the 7th power, and so on forever. And we can put this down into the summation notation, which is just this part. This is the sum when n goes from 0 to infinity. We have negative 1 to the nth power. And another way to look at this is, you can look at the pattern of the coefficient here, and then write the formula for that. But we integrate this earlier, so we have the formula right away. Anyway, right here we write this down, 2n plus 1, and then x to the 2n plus 1, okay? Did you notice the pattern? You should. All these right here are just the odd numbers. They, they do not have factorials. And you see this is 1 to the first power like this, 1 third, and this is to the third power, 1 fifth, and then this is the fifth power. And then they're alternating, right? So negative 1 to the nth power, 2n plus 1 is representing the r numbers. Likewise, 2n plus 1 represents all these odd powers. And the connection is that inverse tangent x looks like this, right? It's an odd function as well. You will have the odd powers for the power series. Power series. Anyway, this right here is the expanded version, and this right here is the summation version of the power series for inverse tangent x. And of course, we have to provide the radius and also the interval convergence in order for this to make sense, right? And now let's look back to here. Earlier we got absolute value of x is less than 1. And this was from here, right? And this was from when we plug in negative x squared into our best friend here. And this was for the power series of 1 over 1 plus x squared. After we simplify all this, we got this. And from here, we can see that r is 1. Right? And this right here, it's only for the power series of 1 over 1 plus x squared. And remember, when we are just doing algebra uh, operations, when we're plugging into our best friend, this is pretty much it. We can get the R right away. I haven't had anything done for the radius of convergence for inverse tangent. But here's the beauty, because we have a theorem for this. 
Well, earlier we just integrated 1 over 1 plus x squared. And the theorem says the r stays the same when we integrate or when we differentiate a power series. So for inverse tangent x, we can say that r is equal to 1 as well because it came from the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared. And for 1 over 1 plus x squared, the r was equal to 1, and it stays equal to 1 for inverse tangent. So that's it for that. And now for the final stage, we have to talk about the interval of convergence. And let me just draw a number line for you guys real quick. For this power series, we know because this is just x by itself right here, right? We are not doing x minus forever or x plus forever. So the center is at zero. So let me just draw a quick picture right here. The center is at zero. And when we know r is equal to one, that means we can go out from the center to the left one unit, and I'll end up with negative one, and then go to the right one unit, I'll end up with positive one. Okay, for the interval of convergence, this is trickier. Well, earlier for our best friend, we know the i will be just parentheses negative one to one parentheses. This means we do not include the endpoints, right? Earlier, when we get our perfect, the power series for one over one plus x squared, r is one, and in fact, if you would like for this, right, the i is also equal to negative one to one. Because all we did was we just plug in by doing algebra, plugging negative x squared into our best friend. And in fact, the i will also stay the same uh, for the endpoints right here. However, when we are doing calculus, differentiation or integration, the convergence at the endpoints might change. And that's the bizarre part because we have to do more work for this. So, in fact, I cannot tell you if I have to include negative 1 or positive 1 at the moment. I seriously don't know. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to put this down right here. Have you guys seen this notation before? No, right? Because I just make this up. Because I have absolutely no idea unless I do more work to check if x is equal to negative 1. Plug into this power series, will this converge or not? I have no idea if x is equal to 1. Plug into here, will I get a convergent or not? I have absolutely no idea at the moment. So this is what I have right now. And we have to erase the board to do more work. So now let's take a look. When x is equal to negative 1, will we end up with a convergent series or not? All right? So when x is equal to negative 1, we plug in this right here into this x. And then we get negative 1 to the nth power over 2n plus 1, and then times negative 1 to the 2n plus 1, right? And now, we are going to simplify this a little bit. Negative 1 to the 2n plus 1 power is the same as negative 1 to the 2n times negative 1 to the first power. And the reason I want to do this is because when we have negative 1 to the 2n power, 2 times n, this is always even. Negative 1 to the even power, this right here, it's always going to be just 1, right? So, this factor doesn't matter anymore. And now you see, we have negative 1 in the parentheses to the nth power times negative 1 in the parentheses to the first power. We can just add the exponent. And let me just put this down first. Negative 1 raised to the n plus 1 power. And then let's put down 1 over 2n plus 1 on the side, just like this. So if you notice, when we plug in the endpoint, in this case, negative 1, into this form here. We get this series. And this is what we used to do, isn't it? And now the question is, does this converge or diverge, and why? OK, well, this is an alternating because we have negative 1 to n plus 1 power, right? So we have to do two things to check. We will take this right here to be our Vn. And the first thing we want to check is, let me just put down, this is the check inside of my check. We want to check first, is Bn approaching to 0? I don't know yet, so I'll put on a question mark. Well, this is just 1 over 2n plus 1. When n goes to infinity, of course, you see this is just 1 over infinity. And of course, this goes to 0, so it checks. That's nice, right? Second thing is Bn plus 1 less than or equal to Bn. I don't know yet. This is asking, is Bn decreasing? Well, let's put this down real quick. 
for bm plus 1, this is the same as 1 over 2. And then we plug in m plus 1 here, and then plus 1, right? And then is this less than or equal to bn, which is just the original 1 over 2n plus 1. Well, if you notice, the top are the same, right? This right here, it has a bigger denominator than that. Of course, this will be smaller than that. So right here, you can also say checks. Therefore, you know this right here converges, right? It converges when x is equal to negative 1. And the reason is because by the alternating series test. So I can come back to here and tell you, hey, when x is equal to negative 1, we actually end up with a convergence series. So I can include that. So I'm going to use a square bracket like this. And now I have to check when x is equal to 1. Remember, this number line represents the x values, right? Earlier was negative 1. This time, x is equal to 1. Plug into here, and 1 to any power, in this case, it's just 1. Let me write down the negative 1 to the nth power first, and then let me put down 1 over 2n plus 1 on the side like this. And notice that this is also alternating, even though this starts positive terms and negative positive. This right here is negative positive negative, but it doesn't matter. We can still use the same alternating series test for this, right? And as, as the one we did over there, uh, it's the same as that, right? So let me just say, of course, it converges, right? Same as that. And uh, converges by alternating series test. So I can come here and tell you, hey, when x is equal to positive 1, we also end up with a convergence series, so we put a square bracket for this. Okay, all in all, i is going from negative 1 to positive 1, and we actually include both m points. Okay? So as you can see, our best friend earlier, it was not including the m points right here and right here, but for inverse tangent, we actually include the m points. And the reason is because we integrate it, right? We integrate a version of the best friend. So you have to double check the convergence at the endpoints. And don't be lazy, you must do two endpoints. Because sometimes maybe one of them is parentheses, the other one is square bracket, or the other way around. Or maybe both brackets, or maybe both still parentheses. But anyway, that's it. Done.